Uh, well, then, uh, I think that we, we, have, we have to continue to win. So uh, I'll, I, my, my talk is about, uh, I didn't know how best to talk about uh, Corbusier as a hero other than to uh, trace uh, 36 years, six, 36 years of uh, sort of uh, relation with Le Corbusier's work. Um, and it started, uh, so I've, I've called this, this talk, uh, and I've only got eight minutes, so I have to be fast, uh, my Le Corbusier. It started with, uh, uh, at the age of 14, I sort of expressed an interest in uh, architecture, and my father thought it was a good idea maybe to take me to the Villa Savoie, and I had my first camera, and my first actual camera shots were taken in this building. And it, it was magical. I mean, uh, the, the fact that you could liberate a, a box uh, and lift it above the ground with a piloti, uh, have uh, fantastic windows, use the roof as a garden, and link di dynamically all that space with a ramp was magical. And, and it meant that architecture could be exciting. Then I, I started architecture school, and the first book that probably was put in front of me was Vers une architecture, which translates in English towards a new architecture, which is always a bit strange to me. Uh, and what I like about that is that somebody, an architect, was actually not just making architecture, they were also talking about it and writing about it and trying to put a vision together, together about uh, how they saw the world. And then what was even more exciting for a, probably a, a budding architect was uh, the, the constant writing about his ambition, his traumas, his worries, his letters to his mother, to his uh, friends, and so on. And so you really, uh, you, he was somebody who was really sharing with everybody the, the work that he was doing. And I thought that was uh, really interesting. Uh, and then I, I visited uh, his, uh, his uh, house after 1934, uh, which was uh, in uh, Nages Sering uh, in the west of Paris. Uh, and at the top of that space, had, he had this wonderful vaulted space. And in that space, every morning, he painted, he made sculptures, he thought about uh, what he was going to do for the rest of the day. And, and so some of his paintings, some of his sculptures, he was thinking about furniture. And then only, and then towards lunchtime, apparently he was writing. And then in the afternoon, only in the afternoon, he was uh, going to his architectural studio. So suddenly, you don't have an architect that is doing architecture. You've got somebody who's thinking about art, who's thinking about writing, who's thinking about architecture and bringing them together. So the, the fascination for me was that humanist uh, quality, uh, interior design, and, and developing this uh, wonderful modular system that was about, uh, obviously about uh, technology and how to uh, uh, make it more efficient, but also about proportions. And then Every one of his drawings, what I thought was wonderful, was that every one of his drawings actually had people in, uh, in, in it, and it was a kind of tr putting man, man, woman, at the center of every part of his architecture. And I, I thought those, those, uh, those drawings talked about domesticity, talked about uh, the, 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 the user rather than the space. Then, uh, to, during my study, I visited the, the Maison Jaoul, which I, I thought was uh, a very strange house because it was modern in its open plan, in many of its construction systems, but at the same time, it was a brick and timber building. And inside, and I think that's for me one of his greatest qualities, is he was able to bring together the modernist and the vernacular vision together. And it was not a kind of Bauhaus uh, idea of uh, clean modernism or uh, minimalism. Then after my studies, 1986, I, I went to India and there saw one, probably my favorite uh, building of Le Corbusier, which was the Association of Milonas uh, in Ahmedabad. And I guess there what, what I thought was interesting was Modernism, modern architecture had always been seen as a kind of the baddie because it was kind of creating an international language and sort of uh, 
overtaking the, the, lo the local language of architecture. And I thought that this building particularly was uh, responding to the climate, responding to the technology that people could use there, uh, was an amazingly airy. You could sit in the shade outside, protected from the weather, uh, with uh, local fauna and, and uh, flora, uh, and, and with wonderful colors. And linked to uh, this trip to India, I spent five days in, uh, in uh, Shandigar, which uh, was quite unusual. They had never seen anybody spend five days there for a long time. Um, and this is like the, the vision of the architects sort of moving up a scale to the vision of a whole city. And uh, the, the city is linked to uh, the human body in the way that uh, the constitutional element is at the very top of the, of the, uh, of the city. The, uh, the, the spine is a long park that goes north to south. The core is that the heart is the, the commerce and industry element of the building and the limbs are the residential element with their, with their veins of, uh, of, uh, of uh, parks. Um, and I thought that, that was an amazingly courageous uh, way of in imagining a city and really seeing it through to uh, the main buildings and give them, giving them nobility. This is the Palace of Justice, an umbrella over, uh, covering a, a, a building and creating this shade in this uh, sun-stroked sun uh, uh, piazza. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, Parliament building, amazingly noble again, and then this wonderful Secretariat building. Not forgetting also the, the artistic side and, and being able to give to the, to the, to, to the, to the town its, its symbol, the open hand. And much more, much more recently, I took my 98-year-old grandmother to uh, Ronchon about five years ago. She's still alive. Um, and we spent two fantastic hours uh, in Rochon. Uh, and for me, what the quality here is, I mean, everybody, it's often everybody's favorite building, but it is, what is extraordinary is that he's bringing uh, organic architecture to um, uh, modern architecture. He's reinventing uh, the, the, the building of uh, worship and creating uh, an extraordinary memorable place that really does put you in relation back with uh, meditative space. And then finally, my last project uh, is uh, the Unité d'Habitation, which was my, the project that uh, I discovered probably more recently on the, uh, in relation to the work that we've done uh, on Park Hill with Urban Splash. Um, and there it's the what people think is that this is the, uh, an urban solution. This is a suburban solution. Post-war France, uh, sprawl of pavilions everywhere, and he had an alternative, which was to lift the building above ground, to create double height spaces, to, create, to have nature to flow underneath the building, and to have the highest possible standards within a vertical city. Vertical city with its restaurant, its hotel, its school, its leisure facilities, double height spaces with views of the, of the sea uh, in, in large family flats, and an extraordinary uh, rooftop where you could run, where you could swim, where you could uh, go to the gym, where the, the nursery was, where the energy center was. And overlooking uh, this uh, parapet was the copies of Le Corbusier's, uh, the, the slabs, the, the ones that people actually don't like because they are only copying, and this is probably my, my point towards the, the villains, uh, is that these buildings were um, copies of the simplicity of the construction without the overall vision that Le Corbusier gave to the Unité d'Habitation. That's my point. Thank you.